Who do you serve? God or wealth and stuff? Our scripture reading today comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is full of, be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. We must choose what we value most, even in our hobbies. For example, if a band you love has a concert on the same night as your favorite team has a big game, which do you choose to go to? Jesus focused on the biggest choice all of us are called to make in life, the choice of what will be our ultimate governing loyalty. Who will have our heart fully? Wealth in and of itself is value neutral, truth be told, but Jesus said putting it at the emotional center of our lives is not. He taught simply, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, and added, you cannot serve God and wealth. Now, the word that Jesus uses is mammon. It's translated as wealth, but it's an Aramaic word. There's a few of those in the Gospels. And it's the Aramaic word for not only cash, money, as we see it, but also stuff, possessions. And Jesus seems to be saying that it's an idol or can be made into one. Few of us would ever think of physically bowing down before our checkbook or a valued possession, but still, what do you think making wealth an idol looks like? What does it mean tangibly for you to choose to serve God rather than stuff? Certainly, we can use our resources, our investments on many things, vacations, collectibles, prized belongings, tickets to special events, homes, retirement savings. Certainly, Jesus did not live in a world of 401ks. Have you ever, though, put your money into something touted as secured that proved to be more than insecure? Do not put your trust in the folly of riches, as First Timothy discloses, in the uncertainties of riches, which is terribly ironic because most of the time we think of riches as a form of security. What do you think Jesus meant by collecting treasures in heaven? Where is your heart today? Do you put as much time and energy into investments that are heaven-bound or investments that are earth-controlled? We all have things stored up in all kinds of places that we do not need anymore. Take some time to go through a closet, a drawer, a cabinet today and ask yourself this question. What in there have you not used that someone else could today benefit from? Gather these up and take them to a local trusted charity. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are Lord of my life, and I want to collect heavenly treasures. As I make concrete everyday choices of how to spend my time, energy, and money, increase my capacity to live out your values. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.